Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the C64 Roundup, your concise guide to the latest news and releases for your Commodore 64. This month's feature is a preview of Lakia, the Lost Island developed by Pulsar. The game kicks things off with a wonderful cinematic introduction showing wise women gathering in a forest for ritual. Unfortunately, things don't go as planned, and their magic escapes beyond their control, sending your lost soul to a new location. The scene cuts across to a small village where we find Nora waking up for her 16th birthday. As we take control of Nora, we dash across to her birthday chest to see what presents lie away. Of all things, we find a feather, a navigator, and a fairy net. I'm sure we'll find these useful for what lies ahead in the game. Nora's mother gives her an errand to find an apogee fruit before we step outside to start our adventure. When outside, the first thing we want to do is equip Nora with a navigator. With this on hand, we are shown all valid exit points on each screen by the white arrows that briefly appear when we first enter each area. Lakia is very much a game of exploration, interaction and completing quests. Only by exploring a village and surrounding forest and talking to the locals can you start to unravel the story that lies ahead. So to start off with, it's a good idea to get familiar with the game surroundings. While you're doing this, you can admire many of the nice graphical touches found within the game, like being able to walk behind objects, the shadows of floating clouds above, and trees and foliage going through the autumnal season. Eventually you'll come across an apogee fruit, and this is where the story really starts to kick off. Something has occurred to make all the locals disappear. Lucky for us, we find that Gomez is still around, and he's very useful in giving us guidance on what we need to do. Gomez directs Nora to locate a witch in the forest who knows more than she lets on. The witch casts a spell that will allow Nora to locate magic stones that will hopefully make all the villagers reappear. As we catch up with Gomez again, we find that he is also used as the game's save point. That's pretty handy, as Lakia offers about 5 plus hours of gameplay from end to end. Visiting Questo is a good idea. He gives us puzzle tasks to complete, and in exchange he'll provide Nora with some useful information about the game quests. But to further help you out, you can press F1 to call up Clouseau, who will give you great hints on what you should be doing next. This is a very nice touch to the game, as it instantly makes it accessible and allows all players to obtain a good sense of progression in the first part of the game. The quests on offer within the game are not too difficult. You will initially go from one person to another, building the story chain until it's complete. Some quests may require Nora to go to bed in order to invoke the night mode setting, changing the graphic environment to a blue night tone setting. There is some combat within the gear, but this is mainly kept to a minimum. As the story unfolds, Nora will explore other regions to acquire important items. In these areas, not only will Nora come across more enemies, but the quests themselves start to become a little bit more puzzle orientated.
Eventually, Nora will find her way to the land of Rabola. And it is at this point where we say goodbye to Classo as we try to complete the second half of the game without his assistance. We travel across Rabola on horseback, depicted on an overhead map view, visiting various locations of interest. And the game will be more of the same as we look for quests to complete and start to understand that our objective has something to do with locating the lost island of Lakia. When travelling across Robola, we are susceptible to random ambush attacks. Thankfully, these combat phases are done in real time and not too difficult to get through. The later part of Lakia contains a number of puzzles that are reliant on visual clues, so it is important to pay attention to every bit of information you come across. I've spent a good few minutes explaining the general elements of Lakia, and I feel that I've barely scratched the surface on the story. So it is here I'll stop and allow you to discover the rest of what the game has to offer. Suffice to say that the overall story is quite clever, in that it's not only until you complete the game where everything fully makes sense with its magnificent ending scenes. Development of Lakia is almost complete, as the only thing outstanding is to fix a couple of bugs and to implement the final version of the synth music tracks. Lakia The Lost Island will be available to purchase in a double disc or USB cassette format from Cytronic Software, while Protovision will be handling the cartridge edition. But hold on folks, the great news is that Lakia can be appreciated by all C64 gamers, as the digital version of the game will be available for free. How good is that? A link to the free Lakia download will be made available on CSDB and Retro Gamer Nation websites once it becomes available. Time to see what's been making news of late. Soren Trotno Madsen pays tribute to his favourite video console party game Super Smash Bros. by producing a demo of Slam Siblings for the Commodore 64. Soren reached out to RGN and offered us an opportunity to access a build of the game demo to try out ourselves. At the moment, the demo is two players only, has no sound, and contains some graphical glitches. But regardless, the game does play quite well and Soren has come up with an intuitive control mechanism to accommodate many different attack moves using a single button controller. But regardless, the game does play quite well and Soren has come up with an intuitive control mechanism to accommodate many different attack moves using a single button controller. 
Slam Siblings is quite a strong demo, but for it to become fully completed release, Soren has put out an expression of interest to anyone in the C64 scene who is interested in making a serious attempt to see the project through to completion. Their latest demo of Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition is available for you to all try out. I thought the previous demo released a few months ago was not very good, so I refrained from reporting about it, but this latest demo shows that the game is certainly now heading in the right direction. The demo contains both 1 and 2 player modes, 12 playable characters with most special moves implemented, and an extensive built-in music player. As you can see, the fighter sprites and some of the background art are still a little rough, and these will be improved, but otherwise this version of Street Fighter 2 is certainly playing better than the official title released on the C64 back in 1992. Hopefully the team behind this project will not rush to finish it prematurely, as I am sure many of you would be happy to hold off a little longer if it means getting a close to arcade type experience. Trevor Story from Icon64 has announced that the team have accepted the challenge of producing Impossible Mission 3. Design development on this project has only just commenced, so it's going to still be quite a while off before it's ready to be unleashed to the public. Alf Ingve is currently concentrating on progressing his Captain Ishtar project. Looking to provide a game that is a mix between a run and gun and a 3D shooter, Alf is once again pushing the modified version of Shoot'em Up Construction Kit to bring us some action packed blasting with some nice graphical art style. There is no release time for Captain Ishtar, but we will be keen to follow its development over time, as it's looking quite promising. Well that was a little bleak wasn't it? Let's pep things up by taking a look at some of the latest new releases. Arlosoft has released their C64 conversion of Berserk. Kill all robots on screen, avoid touching the electrified walls and escape using one of the room exits before evil Otto appears, bouncing towards you. And then do it all over again, room after room. Like the original, the game features sample speech but its quality is not that great and it's difficult to hear what is said. Other than the sound issue, the game plays quite well, and I like that you can lure enemy robots to kill each other. A good port. Berserk is available from itch.io on a name you own price basis, but note that it's not NTSC compatible. The Reaper UK has released his latest shoot 'em up construction kit creation, U-Type. Utilising the sideways scrolling hack to see it, U-Type is a decent attempt at a horizontal shooter. 
The game scrolls well and the graphics are a bit more polished than your usual Seat game, but the enemy patterns are pedestrian and despite having shooting power pickups, the game just lacks overall progression. U-Type is available as a free digital download. Conversions of Wordle seem to be the current craze at the moment. If you want your C64 fix of this currently popular word game, then the first game I can recommend is Words by Kout. Words is not much to look at, and guesses do not have to be real words, but I quite like the addition of statistics after each game. Words is available as a free digital download. If you want a more cosmetically pleasing version of Wordle, then Turtle by Roy Serini is a great choice. But be aware that if you know anything about the author of the game, then you shouldn't be surprised that many of the solutions are based on poo references. Turtle does not require your guesses to be valid words, and does not contain any stats like words. Turtle is also available as a free digital download. Now if you really want a puzzle game with a bit of substance to it, then the Machinations would be highly recommended. The Machinations is an automated puzzle game where you need to transport the binary cell from the source to the target using the modules at your disposal. For example, you can use a push-pull module to move the cell in a linear fashion, while rotate and turn modules can shift cells in an arc movement. It's hard to explain, and you're going to have to refer to the game manual and tutorial video to appreciate what the game has to offer. Sadly, the game's lack of accessibility means that it won't be appreciated by most gamers. For those of you who persevere, you'll have 40 clever levels to solve. Machinations is available to download on a name your own price basis. Apparently, Google's Chrome web browser has an easter egg hidden on its no internet connection error page in the form of a Dino T-Rex runner game. Well then, why not have T-Rex converted to the C64 then? T-Rex 64 sees you trying to guide your little green dinosaur to the end of each level. Avoid deadly obstacles such as cactuses, birds, snakes and scorpios by either jumping or ducking. T-Rex 64 contains 14 levels spread out across three distinct worlds. Hit detection can be a little sus, but otherwise the gameplay on offer is quite fun and well executed. The game is available as a free digital download. Bugs Inc. is a C64 adaptation of the game and watch game Greenhouse. I came into this with low expectations, but was pleasantly surprised with the overall production values and gameplay on offer. Go around the greenhouse using your sprayer to eliminate the insects before they munch away at your crops. Press the joystick button multiple times to make your shooting cloud rise higher. And watch out for the man-eating plants. Kill all the insects, and then it's on to the next greenhouse. This one is well worth trying out, especially since it's also available as a free download. LC Games is back with another arcade conversion, and this time we have Tutankham, originally released in the arcades in 1982. You control an explorer robbing Tutankhamun's tomb. You'll search for precious treasures while fighting off various creatures that guard the tomb, and locating keys that will provide you a safe way through the catacombs. This is another example of a deceptively good game design that enhances what is otherwise a simple game. Your player can only shoot along the horizontal lines, which means you need to take care and apply strategy whenever you want to traverse up or down a vertical corridor. You do have one smart bomb per level at your disposal to help you when you get cornered, and I enjoyed using the warp tunnels to try and negotiate a safe passage through. Tutankham is available from itch.io on a name your own price basis. And that is a wrap on another C64 Roundup. This episode certainly contained quite a bit of content, and I hope you found something interesting this month. For those of you interested in the Commodore Plus 4 version of Lick here, I will have a special video coming out soon showing me that version. Let us know what you enjoyed via the comments section, as I really enjoyed reading everyone's feedback, good or bad. Thank you to viewers who support RGN via Patreon or Coffee. Your contributions are greatly appreciated. Until next time, bye for now.